in regards to uh, a lot of folks here run businesses. They're entrepreneurs, small business owners, from a million year to a billion year in top line revenue, from two employees to 10,000 employees, some. What, what would you say on the opportunity side, specifically mm -hmm. for the business side? So the next three, five, 10 years, we're already seeing it all over the place. Open AI, you got Grok, you got uh, NVIDIA, you've seen all these different things yeah. happening. But as a small business owner, how should I have my, what should I view my relationship with AI? Great questions, I have a lot to say on this. First, don't think 10 years, think it the, the next two years. Crazy things are gonna happen. And if you make a plan for what you're gonna do in nine years, it's gonna be completely irrelevant because you wanna be nimble is what you wanna do. And look at what can you do right now that's gonna help you in the next 12 months and then go from there. Uh, first thing I would talk, about is hype. There is a lot of hype about AI. It's a strong brand right now, so people will try to sell you a glossed up Excel spreadsheet and call it AI. You know, don't fall for the hype. But there, there are two kinds of hype. The first kind of hype is what we had with cold fusion, like where the whole technology is just a complete dud. Then there's a second kind of hype, like the, 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 who remembers the dot, com, who's the dot com bubble? Yeah, so that was a lot of hype, right? But would it have been, and a lot of people lot of lost a lot of money, but is the right lesson to draw from the dot com bubble that the internet never, and the web never amounted to anything? Would the smart thing to do for a company then to be like, no, we're never gonna have a website? Of course not. Uh, so the hype there was not the technology itself was in fact gonna take over the world. The hype was that about certain companies that were giant flops, right? The kind of hype we have with AI now, I feel, is, the sec is exactly the dot-com kind of hype. There are a lot of companies that are very overvalued and are gonna bu go bust, but the technology is here to stay and it's gonna blow our minds. <clears throat> so, <clears throat> So what do we do with our own personal business here in, in such a risky environment? When we, well, first of all, look at your existing business. Instead of dreaming about some pie in the sky, completely new thing you could do, that might be a giant flop, look at what are you doing right now across your company that AI might be able to greatly improve the productivity of. Usually what happens first in your companies will not be that you just replace a person by AI, but rather enhance your staff with AI. So you look at someone who's doing certain tasks and you realize you can give them some tools that they can use to do 40% of their tasks much better. It's much more productivity for the same headcount. Uh, much lower risk now, right? Because they already know what they're doing. If the AI writes the first draft of that report or whatever, they will read it before they send it out. So you don't take a risk of um, being like that lawyer who filed a court case where there was a case law they cited from ChatGPT that was just completely made up and the judge didn't like that. So if you take things you're doing basically and empower your, your, your staff to have AI do first drafts of things, et cetera, but the humans are in charge, there's still quality control, very low risk, huge productivity gains. Uh, a second thing I would say is, um, it's tough you know, when, you're, when you're, especially if you're a small business and, and lack uh, a lot of in-house expertise to not get ripped off by companies who are trying to sell you a bill of goods with an AI sticker on it. So it's a really good idea, even for relatively modest sized companies that you have, to just get at least some in-house expertise. Even just one person is really quite knowledgeable. And uh, that person can then go around and, and talk to other key staff across your organization, learn what they're doing, and, and advise them on how they can automate certain things, in, enhance the productivity, and, and, and get things done in a way where you get all the upside and, and no downside. What, what would be the position of that? Like, and, and by the way, in about eight minutes, I'm gonna to come to you guys to ask questions. We're probably gonna get two or three questions. So if anybody wants to ask Max any questions, go line up by the mic. We'll come to you guys momentarily. So what, when you're looking at hiring somebody that has AI expertise, 
when you're interviewing a CTO or you're interviewing somebody that's a CIO, you're bringing somebody that's a BI, your business analyst, what types of questions are you asking to make sure they have background in AI? Ask them what they've built before. This is very much not about being able to talk the talk, but to be able to actually walk the walk and build systems, make things work. They should have a track record of having uh, built things. Uh, I mean, really nerdy, sit at the keyboard, install stuff, get, get real productivity. Uh, but don't put them in charge of making business decisions. They are, you know, they're automation engineers. They're people who humbly go and interview other people in the company and, hey, and, and ask them, hey, tell me about your workflow. And if those other people feel, yeah, this would be great if you could give me a tool that like, writes the first draft of this thing, that person you've hired could either do it themselves or contract it out to someone else to do it, uh, to sort of provide the expertise. There, there are many pitfalls. I, I mentioned Knight Capital, for example, with this trading disaster, because that's kind of, in a nutshell, what you don't want to do. Put in place some AI system in your company that you haven't understood well enough. It might not even screw you over by crashing. It, it might screw you over by giving your proprietary data to who, whatever company owns the, the chatbot, right? And maybe you don't want that. <clears throat> It might screw you over by being very hackable, and so suddenly you come into the office and there's ransomware on all your computers. It's, it's really important to tread carefully. But if you do tread carefully like this, there's just spectacular upside. Night Capital is the one that you said $10 million per minute. per minute for 44 minutes. Yeah. Did you tell them already or no? <laughs> Did you guys hear about the story, what happened with them? Yeah, yeah I mentioned it. Got it, 10 million, 440 but... minutes. $440 million in 44 minutes? So, so uh, the, the one dirty secret I have to tell you about the state-of-the-art large language models and, and a lot of the Gen AI stuff is we have no idea really how it works. But that's not necessarily a showstopper. If you have a coworker, you don't understand exactly how their brain works either, uh, but you can, ch you can have someone else check their work and so on. Uh, and uh, if there's an important business decision, it, do you have the final call? You ask them some tough questions first. But you have to treat, you have, treat your any AI systems you have as, as the output from them, as some work you got from some temp worker that you have no reason to trust at all. So if there's, you can find a way of just verifying that what they did is actually valid and correct, that takes much less time for you than it would have taken to actually create that thing in the first place, you're on. For the last four years, every time we do podcasts, I have to ask Rob or somebody, hey, can you pull up this news? Can you pull up that? Can, which way do these guys lean? Can you go back to the timeline of, eventually after asking so many questions, I said, why don't we design the website that we want aggregated? We don't write the articles. We feed all of it in using AI. So nine months ago, eight months ago, I hired 15 machine learning uh, engineers. They put together our new site called vtnews.ai. What this allows you to do when you go to it, if, look, if you go to that story right there that says Trump proposes overtime pay, click on it. It'll tell you how many sources are reporting on this from the left. If you go to the right, Rob, it says left sources, click on it. Those are all the left sources. If I want to go to right sources, those are the two. If I want to go to center, I go there. Now, if I want to go all the way to the top and I want to find out a lopsided story, a story that only one side is reporting on, either the left or the right. So if you notice the first one, uh, we'll say Zelensky announces release of 49 Ukrainians from Russia. Notice more people on the left are reporting on that than the right. If I go to the middle one, same thing. If I go to the right one, same thing. You can see what stories are lopsided. And if I pick one of the stories, pick the first story, uh, uh, click on a Trump one, proposes overtime tax cuts. To the right on the AI, I can ask any question I want, but click on the first question that has it. It says, what is the political context and potential motivation behind the tax Trump's new tax cut uh, proposal, click on the question mark. It explains exactly what the motives are. So for you to use, whether you're doing a podcast, you're in the middle of a podcast, or you just want to know it for yourself, you're busy like myself. And last but not least, this is all AI doing this. I'm machine learning engineers. Go all the way to the top. I can go to timelines, go to timelines, and see how far back a story goes. Pick the Israel-Palestinian conflict. If I want to go to that and go back and see why are some those two days a big spike, I'll have Rob pull it over 
to go to those two days with a big spike, and I'll see exactly what happened on that day or the previous day, and many other features vtnews.ai has. So simply go to vtnews.ai. There's a freemium model, there's a premium, and then there's the insider. If you want to have unlimited access to the AI, click on the VTAI Insider. You can now become a member effectively today. So if you like this clip and you want to watch another one, click right here. And if you want to watch the entire podcast, click right here.